it's Nancy, the nurse practitioner. I'm glad you came by to see my channel. I'm going to talk to you about how you can find an aid that you would like to have in your home taking care of somebody you love. And there is an interview process you should do in order to um, find the aid that's the right fit and you could feel comfortable about. So I wrote a book for caregivers and it's called Caregiver Success. It looks like this. And I am going to read from my book um, some information for you that will help you determine how to find a good aid. You know, uh, the first thing is Medicare does provide for some hours of aid service as long as there's a skill and that there's a um, home health agency involved, such as a visiting nurse or a physical therapist. And they'll only come for like an hour and a half uh, and they're coming through the agency. So they're hired through a hospital or a local um, home health agency as well. Um, and the thing about the aid is that they are vetted, they're checked over, um, they meet requirements that the hospital requires, they're put through testing and um, training and such, so they are part of that facility. And they do represent them, so they do have to meet certain standards. And the, those aids are covered, like I said, through Medicare for a short period of time, as long as there's a skill like a physical therapist there after post-stroke or other medical problems. So um, once that aid is, is no longer covered through Medicare or there's no more skill, then you're on your own of finding a private aid. And this is where this interview process comes, comes to play. You know, there are a lot of uh, ways of getting a private aid out there. You can ask your friends. You could ask references from other people who have had an aid that was in the home with their mom or their brother or somebody so that you have a warm reference. But one important thing you do want to have if you're getting somebody that you don't know is to get references and get to speak to the people yourself about their experience with this person being in their home and taking care of somebody they love. Okay, so let's go over some of the stuff here um, that we shouldn't ask uh, when you're talking with AIDS. And um, when, they, when they meet with you, you want to know how long they have taken care of somebody in a home. Are they brand new at this? Were they just... Um, just got out of training, when was the last time they worked, um, like I said you need to have at least two references, have you worked with very ill patients, have you ever taken care of someone who is dying, how did that feel for you when the person was passing away, do you know how to take care of a bed bound person, and so what is the knowledge of these things, and this is a whole list in my book, changing bed linens with the person in the bed, applying under pads, placing a person on a bedpan, changing undergarments, assisting with the use of a urinal, applying a condom catheter, uh, positioning a person in bed, mouth care, skin care, complete bed bath, taking care of a Foley catheter, oxygen, a nebulizer, washing hair in bed. Have you ever given a person medication? Have you ever given a suppository rectally? Do you know how to safely transfer a person from the bed to a wheelchair, a commode, and back to bed? Do you smoke? Do you drive? Do you own a car? How do you feel about preparing meals? What type of foods do you know how to cook? Uh, what would you do if the person were, that you were caring for fell? And if they stopped breathing? Or if there was a fire in the house? And how do you feel about being asked to provide care in the middle of the night? Explain the type of sleeping accommodations that you plan to provide for the, for the aid. You know, tell them what you would do if you have a separate room, if they're living, of course. Um, would they have their own bathroom? Um, would they be able to use the kitchen at will? Or will they be eating with the family? Uh, what kind of time would they have off? Um, do they mind animals, dogs and cats, or pigs? <laughs> I had a patient with a pig in their downstairs room. How much do you charge per hour, per day, or per month? And it's good to have this kind of stuff in a written agreement um, that's signed both by both parties, including all responsibilities and the fee that is being paid. Now, the important thing also to really take into consideration is ethnicity. If the person they're taking care of is, let's say, Indian, and they like Indian cuisine, and they speak their language, but they don't speak English well, you may want to find an aid from Indian uh, descent, okay? Or how do they feel about taking care of somebody who's got dementia and that are difficult? Do they know how to work with those kind of patients? Because they're not always easy, and you have to be patient. Uh, one thing that came across um, from 
talking to a, a rehab person is that it's really, really important that you ask the question of, of activities. Like, let's say your dad loves to play chess, but you don't know how. You know, maybe he could teach you. I'm just saying, you know, puzzles. Um, someone told me that the aide says, I don't like to do puzzles. Well, it's not about what you want to do. It's what you're doing for the person you're taking care of. So if they like to draw, if they like to do crossword puzzles, if they like to sing at the piano, uh, anything that will help them remember and feel like they're having a great day with you besides just personal care. So those are really, really important questions to ask. Um, you can also have what's really important is a board above the bed, and it's, it's a board that tells you about the person. It could say, welcome to the room. This, my name is Myra. Um, I was a chemist. Um, I raised four children in Wisconsin. I got married in 1928. Let's, I'm just giving a story. But the point is, is that when you put things about your mom, who is now totally demented, above the headboard of her bed, or give the bio to the person that's taking care of them, the person actually um, is, they're able to see their past and they're able to give them more things to remember or think about. Um, showing them photo albums when you're there and uh, listening to music that they always liked when, the, when they were with their family. Another thing to, to establish too is a daily routine because for people, especially with dementia, they'd like to have routine and it, it gives some semblance of order and consistency. And it also helps the aide know that as well. And the last thing I would like to say is you want to talk about time off, you know, and are you going to be driving this person to a park or a doctor's appointment? How much support do they have from family? Um, it, you know, how do they get food if they need it? How do they get the medications? Are they able to pour medications? So there's a lot of things you need to go over and it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one, and not every aid is a good fit. So the interview is really, really important. So if you like what I had to say regarding my book, um, this is the book, as I mentioned, it's called Caregiver Success. It's on Amazon. It's also on um, my webpage, caregiversuccess.com. But if you're interested in, in 10 or more books, uh, we could get to a discounted rate by just going to my Email Nancy the, which is T H E N P for nurse practitioner at gmail.com, and you could talk to me directly or even uh, talk to me on YouTube and we can get you some books. But this book is full of everything from skin rashes to stopping smoking to hurricane safety tips to how to use a Hoyer lift and then some. And also, like I said, on uh, page. Um, 26 is how to interview for a good aid. All right, so for Nancy the NP, nice that you came by to my channel. Please subscribe, and I'll see you at the next video. Thanks. Bye.